Let me just say good morning to everybody. So I want to say good morning, everybody. Uh, you know, thank you to the Youth Pride Rhode Island uh, for hosting us today. Uh, the work that is done here in Providence and across Rhode Island to support the needs of the LGBTQ plus uh, youth and combat uh, homophobia and uh, transphobia is truly invaluable. Uh, working with young people is always a key to strengthen the communities. I believe that strongly and, and working with all the different communities that make up the community in the state of Rhode Island is, is critical for as we make Rhode Island a better place. And, and we owe a round of applause for that. So thank you so much. I also want to recognize Bill's sponsors who helped us get us get us here today. Uh, Representative Jay Edwards. <laughs> Senator Melissa Murray. <laughs> Representative Ian Sagello. <laughs> and Senator Megan Call. around the state of signing uh, pieces of uh, legislation that have been really important to the state and our reps and senators have been providing that leadership that's necessary to get us to the point where I actually can sign legislation that I support. We also know that there are many advocates and organizations that stepped up to move this legislation forward. A uh, few of them are here today, the LGBTQ Action Rhode Island. Network and Glad. Thank you all for your leadership. I'm proud to be here to sign two pieces of legislation that will continue to make Rhode Island a more equitable and inclusive state. Uh, these bills will continue to make members of our community feel safe where they live, where they work, and where they find employment across this uh, beautiful state of Rhode Island. These bills are continu will continue to tell the LGBTQ plus community that you belong right here in Rhode Island, uh, that you're welcome, and that we stand with you, and that you're an important community in our state as we move to a, a point where, you know, our state becomes stronger and stronger coming out of our pandemic. After all, we are at our proudest when we all are united as one. And I remember in my inaugurations when I was sworn in, where I said that, um, you know, good teams are, are one thing, but the very best teams work together. And we make sure that we, we, we work together and step in, in one step as one community uh, to make Rhode Island this great place. So we're proud to have uh, you here, visible and strong voices in our cities and towns making a difference every single day, and being a voice for those who for a long time didn't have one. We all know that this is a community that has fought tirelessly for generations, for visibility, inclusion, equity, and inclusiveness. Make no mistake, while progress has been made, we know that work continues. It's all on us to stand united, to commit to treating people with dignity, dignity, and to serve as allies and activists for our marginalized communities. With legislation like the bills I'm signing today, in a matter of moments, we're striving to make Rhode Island a better place, one step at a time. And thanks to the work of the advocates and our leaders in the General Assembly, we're eliminating exemptions that allow discrimination in housing based on gender, identity, and expression. And we're making single user public restrooms non gender specific. Once again, I thank the representatives and the senators here today, the legislators who voted to pass these bills, and the advocates who have championed in these causes uh, during uh, this session. Through all that combined work, 
We saw this legislation across the finish line, and I'm honored uh, to sign them into law today. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Representative Jay Edwards to come up and say a few words. Representative? First, I'd like to thank Governor McKee for having the strength to sign the this piece of legislation, and especially to all of my co-sponsors, especially Representative Kislap, who brought this bill to me, and who was instrumental in helping me get it across the finish line in the uh, House of Representatives. This is, as the Governor said, <laughs> this is, as the Governor said, a very common sense, straightforward piece of legislation that will help people with a normal, normal problem. Having a non-gender specific bathroom is something that all of us can use, especially people in the LGBTQ community. This is just makes common sense, as Senator Murray and I were just discussing. Of all the pieces of legislation I've had this year, this was probably the most common sense, one of the easiest ones for me as a person to put forward and to work on. And it makes just great sense for Rhode Island. And I'm, I'm proud to be a sponsor, and I'm proud of Rhode Island for passing this. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce now my sponsor in the Senate, Senator Mark. No one should have to worry about their health or safety simply because they need to use the toilet. This bill was about so much more than simply changing a sign on the door. It's a sad fact that transgender, non-binary, and gender non-conforming people have faced taunting, threats, and even violence for using the so-called wrong bathroom. We heard many of these very personal stories during committee hearings, and I want to personally thank those individuals that publicly shared those painful experiences. This law will not only help make trans, non-binary, and gender non-conforming folks feel safer in public spaces, it also provides real health benefits for everyone. Because gender-inclusive bathrooms benefit gender-conforming people too, they're easier for families with children and people with medical conditions, and helpful for people with disabilities who have other gender caregivers. I'm excited that we were able to pass this legislation into law, and I thank the many advocates, organizations, and as well as my colleagues and the governor for your support. And I would like to turn it over to my colleague, Senator Coleman. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Murray, um, and to the governor and all of my colleagues and, uh, and community organizations who are here today. I am really, really delighted to be here. I'm talking about the other bill. Um, to witness the signing into law of an additional measure. This one is aimed at keeping Rhode Islanders in safe housing and free from discrimination. Um, after today, sexual orientation and gender identity will no longer be valid reasons to discriminate against potential tenants. Not that it ever was a valid reason, but it was a legal reason. Um, this has clearly been a year when the need for safe housing has been at the forefront of everybody's minds. Um, it's a deeply personal issue to me for several reasons. Research also shows that a disproportionate number of homeless youth in the U.S. are LGBTQ+. LGBTQ+, um, adults are also at disproportionate risk for experiencing homelessness, um, and both trans adults and trans children are at disproportionate, disproportionately high risk. Um, according to the Williams Institute at UCLA, 17% of LGBTQ plus people have reported experiencing homelessness at some point in their lifetime. This is compared to about 6% of the general population. Um, especially in the context of a pandemic like the one we are living through, it's abundantly clear that safe and healthy and affordable homes are critical to mental and physical health, they're critical to success in school and work, and the ability to keep oneself well generally. So removing discriminatory barriers to obtaining housing like we are doing today is a crucial step in ensuring access to housing. Um, in addition to the community groups who have been mentioned who are amazing, I would like to give a particular shout out to the Rhode Island Commission on Human Rights. Um, I believe they have a representative here today um, who, uh, who, first, who first approached me with this issue, um, as well as to my co-sponsor in the House, who I'm really pleased to introduce now, Representative Edith Jell.
and then <coughs> he introduced legislation repealing Rhode Island's sodomy law. Because she and Mary, her partner, wanted to adopt children and they were worried that the sodomy law might get in the way of their adopting children. I took that legislation on and was pleased to see the sodomy law erased from the book. Um, and now, but there's been other work since then. And in 1995, Rhode Island actually did do um, housing discrimination legislation regarding LGBT people, but it exempted owner-occupied three and two family houses, as if that's somehow different than non-discrimination or however legislation the governor will sign today um, raises that exemption. It also raises some language that I'm really embarrassed to be a part of the General Assembly that passed in 1995 regarding discrimination. And I want to read it because it's so good to have it in mind. The term sexual orientation means having or being perceived as having an orientation for heterosexuality, bisexuality, or homosexuality. That stays in there, but it comes out. This definition is intended to describe the status of persons and does not render lawful any conduct prohibited by the criminal laws of the state or impose any duty on a religious organization. This definition does not confer le legislative approval of such sex status, but is intended to ensure the basic human rights of persons to hold and convey property and to give and obtain credit regardless of sex status. Can you imagine that sort of language being used about any, any group of people in this day and age? It's taken a while. 2021, but we're getting rid of it. And I want to thank everybody involved in getting that done. And particularly, I want to thank Wendy Beck for getting behind this as she's been behind so much. Thank you all. Here in Rhode Island just a few weeks ago. 
I think of the 31 transgender siblings of mine who have died so far this year across the country, making 2021 on course to be the most violent for transgender people in some time. And as important as these bills are, and please don't think that they're not important, I know that they couldn't have protected those people. And the truth is that there's probably no law that could have protected them because we can't make a law to erase discrimination and bigotry from the hearts and minds of people who commit those sorts of acts. But as a community, we've proven that we can come together and do great things and make great progress. And so I want to thank everyone again who was a part of this in any way. And I want to challenge everyone here to continue thinking of how, as a community, we can work towards including everyone in our vision of progress, how we can help to remove the things that place transgender and LGBTQ plus people in danger. There's still so much left to do, but I'm grateful for days like today where we get to celebrate. Thank you. And um, I'd like to introduce Monique Paul, who is the board vice president of TGI Network. Thank you, YPI, for donating this wonderful space. My name is Monique Paul, and I am the Vice President on the Board of Directors for TGI Network of Rhode Island. I am excited to be here for the signing of these historic bills. We are grateful for the le leadership of the legislators who worked on behalf of our community. In particular, we want to thank Representative Edwards and Senator Murray. I want to thank the Commission on Prejudice and Bias for their leadership on housing discrimination. And I want to thank the LGBTQ Action Ally and GLAD for both for their work on both bills, but especially their commitment to bringing the gender neutral restroom bill across the finish line. This will be life changing for many of our of our women transgender. Thank you. Congratulations to everybody. Woo!